A two-year-old goes missing and mother found dead. This is a bizarre missing person case I had never heard of until very recently, and I'm surprised this case hasn't gained more attention. A lot of details are unclear or haven't been made public, so unfortunately there are a lot of questions I may not be able to answer. I apologize in advance, as this is going to get very long. Nicole Fitz, 32 and her two-year-old daughter Ariana Fitz was reported missing in San Francisco on April 5, 2016. Nicole was last seen on April 1, 2016. Reports of when or where she was last seen are a bit confusing. Several sources say she was last seen or heard from leaving her home on April 1 to meet someone she knew. Who she was meeting is not known. However, police also believe she traveled from her job at a Best Buy in San Francisco via the 3rd Street Metro line at around 9.45 that same night. A roommate she lived with at the time seems to have confirmed that Nikki was last seen leaving their house to meet someone on the night of April 1st. Ariana Fitz, meanwhile, was last confirmedly seen sometime in February of 2016 in Oakland, though it is not clear by whom she was last seen. Nicole, who went by Nikki, grew up the middle child of three sisters raised by a single mother. Nikki has been described as shy and naive growing up but seems to have been an incredibly kind, compassionate, and driven young woman. As a teenager, she volunteered frequently at Culver Slauson Recreation Center, and at just 15 received an award from the City of Los Angeles for her volunteer work. In 2012, Nikki, her younger sister Tess, and Tess's girlfriend moved into an apartment together in Pacifica. Not much has been said about her, but at some point in this time period, Nikki had a daughter named Cindy. The three had a hard time affording their apartment, and when Tess and her girlfriend moved out, Nikki, pregnant with Ariana at the time, wound up in a women's homeless shelter, while Cindy was sent to live with her dad. At this shelter, Nikki met and began a relationship with Lamasani Briggs, who invited Nikki to move in with her. Nikki initially paid Briggs rent and also paid her to watch Ariana while Nikki worked. Tess claims Briggs was taking advantage of Nikki, and eventually, Briggs' nieces, Syla Hearn and Helena Martin began babysitting Ariana. Others reportedly begged Nikki to find arrangements for childcare outside of Briggs' family, and after Lamasani stopped watching Ariana, she raised Nikki's rent. In addition to this, Nikki had never been given a key to the apartment and was only able to get in when someone else was home. Tess and her girlfriend say Nikki's relationship with Lamasani quickly became quite abusive, with Nikki frequently receiving abusive and accusatory text messages. In November 2015, Tess and her girlfriend picked Nikki and Ariana up from Briggs' apartment and drove them to Santa Cruz. After Nikki left, Lamasani allegedly continued to harass her, texting Nikki to bring my baby back here. At this time Nikki was once again homeless frequently sleeping on acquaintances' couches and commuting from the Santa Cruz area to the SF Best Buy for work. At the same time, she was in the midst of a custody battle for Cindy, after CPS removed her from her father's care, and would frequently have to travel to LA for court. Nikki would leave Ariana in the care of either Silo or Helena while she worked and when she had to travel for her custody battle over Cindy. Eventually one of Nikki's co-workers offered her and Ariana a place to stay. At this time, Silo and Helena became reluctant to return Ariana to Nikki. In mid-March 2016 Nikki contacted them to pick up Ariana, only to be told the pair had allegedly taken Ariana to Disneyland, a fact Nikki was not told about beforehand. At this point, Tess and her girlfriend say they had not seen Ariana since February, and it is not known how long it had been since Nikki had last seen her. On April 1, Nikki spent the evening with a co-worker after work. At some point withdrawing several hundred dollars from an ATM, she did not tell anyone what this was for. Later that night, her roommate says Nikki received a call from someone and left, claiming to be meeting someone at a nearby restaurant and saying she would return shortly. The roommate woke up the next morning to an empty house and received a text overnight from Nikki stating she was heading to Fresno with a friend named Sam. Her roommate had never previously heard of any friend named Sam and was also confused as Nikki didn't have a car to travel and meet anyone with. At 1.13 a.m. On April 2, Nikki posted to Facebook spending time with my three-year-old need this break. This post was odd as Nikki was reportedly fanatical about correct grammar and spelling, and because Ariana was two and a half at the time, not three. Nikki failed to show up for work for the next several days. When Tess and her girlfriend found out Nikki was gone, 
they immediately traveled to San Francisco and filed a missing persons report. A gardener working the early morning shift on April 8 at John McLaren Park noticed an odd wood board with a silver character painted on it behind some bushes and brush. Underneath this board was Nikki's body, curled in the fetal position in a shallow grave. The death has quickly ruled a homicide, though no details of specific injuries or the exact cause of death have been released. Search warrants were quickly executed for the homes of Silo and Helena, though there was no sign of Ariana and police say the sisters were uncooperative. During the investigation, it came to light that Helena had previously served six years in prison after killing the father of her child at 18. Helena Martin and her husband Devon, along with Silo Hearn, have been named persons of interest in the case. The Fitz family and Best Buy have both offered separate $10,000 rewards for information leading to Ariana being found. The Fitz case itself, along with media attention on the case, was likely hindered by what was a tumultuous year for the SFPD, which included multiple officer-involved shootings and the chief of police stepping down. In 2017, SFPD reported that they seized and searched a vehicle believed to be related to the case. Beyond that, there have been very few updates to the case in the past several years. Nikki's murder remains unsolved. No one has been charged or arrested in the case. And little Ariana has never been found. So what fate befell this mother and her young daughter? Why was a woman who was seemingly loved by almost everyone she came in contact with murdered in cold blood? Where is Ariana Fitz today, and will she ever be found? I will add a disclaimer that most of the details of Nikki's childhood and family, as well as many details about the suspects, were only in the SF Weekly article, though they do seem to be tied to or loosely corroborated by details from other sources. The SF Weekly article was the only one from 2018, while all others I found were from 2016, so it is possible that many of the details in SF Weekly were only discovered after the writing of these other articles.